the last. <laughs> I mean, what? Oh, okay. I just feel like this is like the last piece I'm ever going to read. Oh. Woo! Woo! All right. Make it good. So, I mean, I'll probably be a little irritated, but it's okay. Dogs. Damn dogs. Let me tell you, I don't personally hate them or anything. I mean, they're animals. Just about 99% of their owners make me want to vomit in my socks. <laughs> Let me take you back a bit. Grin, almost any dog story will suffice, but this is one I vividly remember. So I'm on my way to have dinner at this girl Sasha's house with her parents. At least her name might have been Sasha. Sarah, Sylvia, something with an S. I'm not quite sure because after this event, we didn't date again. So for the sake of simplicity, from here on out, we'll refer to her as bitch. <laughs> Preparing to leave for her house, already the idea of choking down low-quality home-cooked food and forcing mindless small talk with her phony parents is making me nauseous. Unsure of what to wear, I finally resign to wear some sweater I find in the back of my closet. So after the 20-minute ride, I drive up and park in the driveway. And I'll be honest, I feel like a complete dumbass. I ain't no phony, so there's no way I was going to wear some bullshit tie or crap like that just to impress my parents. But the fact that I was wearing that ridiculous sweater just made my whole body jitter. <laughs> Seriously, I ain't no phony, man. Hell. Naturally, walking up to the door wearing said sweater, I feel despicable. <laughs> who wears sweaters? Assholes, that's who. <laughs> you don't even sweat in it. And if you do, then it's too hot to be wearing one, okay? My logic is foolproof. Regardless, I never wear the sweater again. Back to bitch. As soon as I ring the doorbell, barks of agony resound from inside as two dogs leap up and begin clawing and attacking the glass panes on either side of the door frame. You know what I'm talking about. Through the scratch and slobber-covered chaos, I see a figure inside move toward the door. Her mother's face emerges as the door opens, and before we can even begin to exchange our phony pleasantries, her deranged dogs pounce on me and knock me back a few steps, promptly licking and scratching my legs. It's like they've never seen a human before, man! <laughs> but of course, this is clearly the standard greeting this fortress of hell provides all guests, as a cute little devil mother just smiles and waves me in saying, don't mind them, they just love people. <laughs> love. <laughs> they love me. <laughs> they love me. You see, ma'am, the only reason I'm mildly surprised by your statement is because I am now two feet deep in a pool of their saliva, which leads me to believe they're trying to drown me, not love me. But I apologize, it's an easy mix-up. You'll have to excuse my simple thought process. After a few failed attempts at batting them away, she starts cooing at them. Oh, you just want attention, don't you? I try to squeeze past their menacingly large bodies. Who wants a dog that could eat a human? I don't know. <laughs> and I can't even think because the two mutts are so loud. My eyes scream to Mama Bitch. For the love of all non-canine related gods, please get these things off me. My silent expressions of terror are finally heard when she gently calls them all. Oh, oh, Butch, stop it! Butch, Macy, come here! Come here, come here for a treat over here! Don't infantilize them! Tranquilize them, you psycho bitch! I just lost a testicle! <laughs> At this point, all traces of my cologne are smothered by the noxious fumes of dog. And I just sort of smile, continuing to bat them away, wishing I could just sit down and get through the phony dinner already. The father finally emerges and calls them back to their lair, allowing me to finally step inside the foyer and shut the door. Her mother proceeds to give me this guilt-inducing roll of the eyes as she helps shoo the dogs off. Oh, right, like, like I'm the inconvenience here. I'm offending her dogs. Are you shitting me, lady? <laughs> anyway, I shake hands with both their parents, and I realize, as I've, I realize I've already forgotten their names. I, I always, I always seem to do that. I guess I just forget on principle, seeing as I don't really give a crap. <laughs> After what seems like an hour of canine-induced hell, bitch walks down the spiral staircase into the foyer, looking all pretty up. I guess she was hot, but I really can't think of her having any attractive qualities anymore due to her involvement in this godforsaken reader. So we hug, and I make a couple of phony comments about their nice house, wishing I could gag on a pair of socks. <laughs> she looks down. What happened to your pants? She asked, laughing. I resignedly tilt my head down to notice slobber all over my left leg. Oh, I said, Charlie, I guess your dogs decided they wanted a Mac with me before you did. <laughs> <laughs> she starts laughing. I just wish they'd ask me to a movie first or something. I continue, Riley. 
I'm hilarious. <laughs> As she continues to cackle on my quasi-clever joke, I think to myself that perhaps the dogs haven't completely ruined it. <laughs> we spend a good two minutes at the sink cleaning the stain of slobber off my jeans, and then follow her parents into the dining room, conveniently located at the end of the hallway where the dogs make their haunt. I cautiously tread behind Bitch, careful not to step too loudly as to attract any attention from the watchdogs. We round the corner, and immediately their hellish ears perk up. I, 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 I bolt to the bathroom. However, Bitch comes to the rescue and dashes to block them up as they leap toward us, barking like rabid demons. You see her every day! Why in the glory of William Shatner are you barking? <laughs> but Bitch bends down and starts cooing at the repulsive most. Oh, you do get so naughty but one Winston's parents. Yes, you did! Yes, you did, you naughty boy! And she scratches his head and then turns to the other one, giving, You too, little lady, just awful! What? Where is the ass kicking, man? Your dog? Lift my pants and he gets patted on the head? I'm betting my lucky playboy that if I lick somebody's pants, I get my ass kicked. I'll ask, oh, bark, bark, Jesus Christ, quit barking, dog. Just gets a scratch behind the ears, and I'm still left with dog slime on my only pair of jeans. Yes, I only own, I only own one pair of jeans. I'm sorry. All four of us then sit to dinner and manage to suck down a very, a very dry chicken parmesan while their parents ask me some somnolent questions about college and my future life they care. Around the time I'm about to regurgitate the piss poor excuse for chicken on my plate, the dogs start barking. Again. <laughs> Nothing happened! Why are you barking? <laughs> the parents then politely shut them up from the table, but this of course only incites further arousal from the good God when they stop barking! Dogs! Seriously, why have dogs? All they do is eat, shit, bark, and slobber. It's like having a giant hairy baby, but you have to walk it twice a day instead of just letting it rot in front of sesame. <laughs> Eardrums still ringing, we finally struggle through the mundane catastrophe that is dinner, and I'm finally set to go home. It's at this point that her mother suggests that Bitch and I go walk the dogs together. Mama Bitch has now been upgraded to the title of Captain Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and quietly grimace as she begins to leash up the sweet lord or gather my brains at the school that they don't stop barking dogs. <laughs> Captain Bitch continues to pester me about college and then proceeds to comment that I seem distant with her little doggies. Excuse me, ma'am? For starters, your little doggies are at least the size of a wild rhinoceros with a pituitary disorder. <laughs> Secondly, you smell, okay? That's the thing with dog lovers. They assume everyone else must love them, too. Just because I come over to your house doesn't mean your pets need to body search me. <laughs> Curiously enough, I happen to enjoy personal space. These dog owners just make me want to puke in a puddle of my own snot, swallow it all, and Ralph it up again. <laughs> There's just something relentlessly galling about the owners of dogs and all the dogs in the world. Some sickening and undeserved self-importance. And of course, if the owners notice the slightest tinge of distress in your demeanor while their berserk pets violate you, they give you a look like you're hurting the thing's feelings or some crap like that. Dog lovers are just like their dogs, annoying, loud, and they smell. <laughs> Wave a bar of soap in the dog owner's face, and they just don't know what to do, but I've tried, I promise. <laughs> anyway, Bitch thinks it's a great idea to walk the dogs, and despite the fact that it's almost dark outside, we go anyway. We're halfway out the door, and it's an already 80% of the world's mosquito population is glued to our skin. The dogs promptly unleash vocal hell. They won't shut up the whole way around the block, making any conversation between Bitch and me impossible. We stop in front of every single lawn, hoping to drop a fresh load under some lucky family's mailbox. <laughs> but they happily refuse and gleefully spin in circles, wagging their tails. I offer to go grab some castor oil for them, and then bitch giggles to me, that's awful! What? Why do people say that's awful when nothing about it is remotely bad? Why replace your standard small talk lines with bullshit phrases that make no sense? Which makes me so angry. If, if you don't mean something, wrong with people. Anyway, she claims that it's normal for the dogs to take a while, so I just grit my teeth and keep walking through the dusky mosquito cloud. 
After half an hour of failed dog defecation, we finally give up, rounding the bed toward home and stop at the end of the bitch's wall. She turns, takes my hand, licks her lips, and looks up at me all cute. Sorry about tonight, she says softly, and then leans in to kiss me. Finally something is going my way. I can do it. That she wanted a good kiss or anything, but at least it was something to get my mind off this piss poor excuse for an evening. After about a minute of mediocre kissing, I feel a tug in my foot, and, and I look down and see the dogs dropping a load on my shoe. <laughs> my shoe. <laughs> Say goodbye on my way to get in the car. <laughs>